My name is K. N. Pridhiraju. I teach in the Department of Geography in Institute of Science in Banaras University at Varanasi. Today, I am going to talk on maps, aerial photos, and satellite imagery in earth science. First, let me deal with the second part of the topic of earth science, and then a little while later, I will gradually lead you into the first part of the topic, that is maps, aerial photos, and satellite imagery. Earth science is a major branch of knowledge, and in earth sciences, you have subjects like geology, geophysics, geography, climatology, oceanography. In every subject, there is an object and there is an objective. The object in earth science and in all these subjects is the earth. And the general objective of the earth science is simply to understand the earth. Or in other words, we can say to understand the natural world. And finally, to understand its environment, because all the multitude of objects, processes, and phenomena around and over the earth, the, they interact with of everything that is connected with the biotic world, including humans. And the final result of all the interactions of all the objects of the natural world, as well as the cultural and other biotic world, is environment. That's why it is uh, the a very important, a very important point when we are talking about the Earth. Ultimately, we wish to know uh, what is the environment of the Earth. Now. Let us come to the natural world. Natural world is very complex, very complex because of multitude of parts and complex interconnections, interdependencies, interrelationships, and in which things do not happen in sequence. They happen all together. And that's why the natural world is very complex and very difficult to understand. In fact, very difficult to study because of these intricacies of interconnections. Because one thing you remember, each and every part, each and every object on this earth is connected with each and everything else on this earth. What on earth in the universe one can say? Each and every particle anywhere in, in any corner of the world, any corner of the universe is connected with each and every other particle of the universe. This is the philosophy of science. Now, the question is, how do we study the Earth? Because in order to understand the Earth, we have to take up first the study. It's a study. So, how do we study? Understanding is next. Study is first. So, we study essentially, uh, we can call this a scientific study. Because uh, in science, essentially, we have to go and see our object. We have to make measurements. We have to make quantifications. And we'll be forced to classify. And there is what is called analysis, another step in science. And finally, we synthesize. So science proceeds in these steps. The first step is observation, personal observation. So this is, in fact, these are the methods these are the stages to proceed in any scientific investigation, any scientific study of any object. Observe, measure, quantify, classify, analyze, and then synthesize. And these are subjects in earth science, geology, geophysics, climatology, oceanography. They, are, they can be called as exclusive sciences. And these subjects, they deal with some component of the physical earth. By physical earth, I mean uh, atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere together is called a physical earth. So here, geology, geophysics deal with the lithosphere, 
and of course, the geophysics deals with interior of the earth, climatology deals with atmosphere and oceanography deals with hydrosphere. So that is why they are called exclusive sciences as they deal only with some component of this physical earth. But now you will wonder, I was talking about the natural world. A natural world is a combination of all these components plus the biotic component, the plants and animals including humans. Now let us see. Geography is one among these subjects in earth science and this geography is unique because it is uh, an inclusive subject unlike the other subjects which are exclusive, this is an inclusive subject and in this subject of geography we deal with the physical earth as well as the biotic earth, I mean the plants, animals and humans. So especially we, we, we care to study the mutual interactions between the physical earth and the inhabitants of the earth in the form of biotic organisms, plants, animals and humans. And earth scientists basically they are interested uh, where things are located, where objects are located, where processes and phenomena are occurring on the surface of the earth, where is the question number one. And this where is addressed by location of course, the location of objects, the location of features that is very important. And then why they are there, this is another question, a particular object, a, process, a particular process and a phenomena, why they are there and why they are occurring or happening. And are there any patterns and distributions because we do not have objects in singles. We have even the, the objects in multiples, same for example, you take for example humans, there are varieties of types of humans, not a single human. We are different, Indians are different, then Middle East people are different, Europeans are different, Africans are different. So then these differences to work out, we group humans. So this grouping is called classification and there are certain distributions, a very peculiar distribution, certain things occur in certain place and certain things do not occur in other places. So here one important thing while studying these things or objects on the surface of the earth is keep, are there any patterns and distributions created and why they are created. And then another important thing connected with the earth or connected with every object of the science, every object of science subjects, why and how they are changing, why and how our objects are changing and uh, as for the earth it is very dynamic unlike many other objects, everything on the earth, not only earth, everything on the earth is dynamic and they are changing and they finally we have to deal with how and why they are changing. Here, earth is a very huge object, not only huge, it is a very complex object and the complex I have already told you why it is complex because of multitude of parts. Earth as a whole is an object, yes definitely it is a one object, but look at its parts, multitudes of parts, look at its processes, multitude of processes, right. And the complexity is the for say for example, you have an environment of the earth, you do not have a single environment of the earth, no. There are varieties of environments of the earth, like for example, why, why because the earth is divided into zones, it has zones, right, you have an equatorial zone, you have a temperate zone, you have an equatorial zone, you have a tropical zone, you have a polar zone, so there are zones. So in each zone there is a different environment and in each zone there are again differences. In each of these zones there are areas with some features present and with some features not present there which are present elsewhere in different areas. So zones can be divided into areas, zones can be divided into regions and every region has got its own environment because of the interactions of the objects there within that zone because the presence of objects differ from zone to zone, from region to region, from area to area. And we have 
a lot amount of knowledge already accumulated, right, given to us from our ancestors who had moved around the earth and early, the first it was movement on foot. People had come to know about new places and man naturally is a very gregarious animal, he moves much and he moves because of number one, uh, curiosity, I say number one is curiosity and number two is food, searching for food and number three is protection, safety. Well, for these three reasons man moved and uh, while moving he had come to know about new places and new things and he shared that information, he communicated that information and it has become information to a group of people. So earlier it was all discovery, whatever little small new thing seen by a man outside his area, it is all a discovery and all these discoveries were made by moving on foot. And then later on man turned intelligent and he developed new modes of transport to be able to move very easily and very quickly and to be able to move long distances and that was the ship. So boats and ships helped man voyage across the oceans to see new places and so many navigational aids were developed and so many methods were developed to navigate in the oceans and that itself also is a knowledge connected with the earth because they are the tools using which earth can be seen, different parts of the earth can be seen, travel to and can be seen. So here in, uh, in the, uh, at one stage it was all voices and journeys and there was a lot of information with people. And this information mostly it remained as descriptions and narrations and, and also as mental sketches and maps. They were mental sketches and maps. I give you a beautiful example of a mental sketch and a mental map. In uh, Ramayana and Mahabharata there are many instances where we come across geographical knowledge or even including geological and geophysical knowledge, it is there. And particularly I quote one, one uh, particular uh, mental map, right, given by uh, that had been in the mind of uh, Susheshna and Jambavan. They, they tell Hanuman when Lakshmana wounded and fell unconscious in the battlefield, Jambavan and Susheshna, the doctor, they give directions to Hanuman, you go this, like this, like this, this much of a distance, you will find this, you will find this, you will find this, and you will find these people, and then you will find two peaks, and in between those two peaks, then you have this Sanjeevani Parvat. Yeah, this is a beautiful mental map, and it, Hanuman follows it and gets back the Sanjeevani uh, mountain. Yeah, like this among uh, uh, people, in the early times there were mental sketches and mental maps and they were good enough but they remained in the heads of a few people. There is no circulation, it is very difficult and gradually, thank goodness, paper had come, right and uh, people started putting these mental sketches and mental maps of the paper as sketches. Earlier there were, there were only sketches, they were not maps. And then gradually these sketches, these sketches uh, turned into maps, maps to a scale, maps to a measure. Measurements are possible. How it had become possible? It became possible with the division of the earth. So man started dividing the earth very systematically, very systematically and this division is, this division has been made by longitudes and latitudes. And with these longitudes, latitudes, accurate point, accurate location of objects can be given. So one answer is there. For us, the earth scientists care to know where their objects are located. So now this longitude, latitudes is one answer. So this is a very remarkable um, discovery and a remarkable knowledge of dividing the earth with longitudes, latitudes, so one point is over, that is the location of our object. And then these people gradually started making maps, varieties of types of maps on varieties of scales, small maps, 
small scale maps, large scale maps, very large scale maps with lot of details. And these maps help that scientists. These maps help that scientists bringing his field, bringing his object onto his desk. So maps helped in, in studying the earth, right, to a certain extent, sometimes very directly and sometimes indirectly. Because here sometimes some of the maps can be read very easily and can be understood very easily, but sometimes maps need a bit of a training to understand. So here the, uh, the intelligent people use maps to study about their earth by remaining in their own chambers, in their own classrooms. And this is one thing. So maps brought the object of study for earth scientists onto their desks, this is one thing. And but map cannot give all the information. Map cannot give all the information. Why? Because map is an, a representation of a part of reality, it's not full reality. And it is a representation with symbols, colors, and lines. So it is not a real picture. It doesn't give a real picture of the world. It is a representative picture, difficult to read, sometimes difficult to understand. So it needs, they need to be interpreted. And interpretation needs a bit of a training. So here, uh, there is this disadvantage with the map. It is not a real picture of the Earth. But of course, the, the advantage and the value of the maps cannot be denied. They helped earth scientists to navigate in the field. They also helped earth scientists to locate what and wherever and whatever they have seen on the map. And they marked all the, in fact, the attitude of things and some information about the objects on the map itself, brought, them, brought the maps back into the laboratory. And then they started thinking why this is so, why this is so, it's like that. So that way maps. Uh, really help our scientists a lot, no doubt in that. And of course, I will uh, discuss with uh, in detail how these maps actually help the earth scientists. Of course, it's not the maps alone that the earth scientists uh, use to study their object. Essentially, the earth sciences are field sciences. And essentially, one has to go to the field to see the reality oneself. A very personal observation is very important. They are field sciences, but still to go to the field and to mark what we have seen in the field, we need maps. So that is how maps have helped. And in detail, I will discuss about this first part of the topic, maps, aerial photos, and satellite images in my next talk. Thank you.